we are actually not solving this problem now we are coming into this problem right and the concept name is we are actually trying to learn virtual port channel and i am comparing two things we have normal ether channel here right what this ether channel is saying you all know that we have two switches switch number two switch number one and if we make these two link as a part of ether channel then its spanning tree is going to understand that this is these are not two interfaces 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 1 sorry 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 these are one interface which can be designated by port channel 1 or 10 whatever you have decided to give it right similarly spanning tree here is going to say these are not two interfaces these is uh, these are not 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 these are actually one interface which is po1 and if that is the case then basically these two links are same link and that is why if arp is going here then spanning tree is not going to send it back because for a spanning tree now these are not two links these are the single link right those are in our pump situation why i am reminding you because these are absolutely necessary concepts to understand to understand ppc now i can see a question from mr rahul rahul ji you can ask your question and thank you so much for asking the question yeah vishnu uh, in the uh, virtual switch of uh, server how the uh, intervention is happening like in our, in our search we do create svi but uh, on the virtual switch how the intervention communication is happening yeah so basically there uh, right now i do not see anybody has implemented router also or svis there in the virtual switch okay for that basically you all know that if we want to communicate between vlans then a layer 3 device or layer 3 interface should be there which is doing the routing between two different networks so basically in server environment i haven't seen that till now right and there is a specific reason for it i will talk uh, i will talk about it but yes different vlans communication can happen right that vlan 10 can be communicate can, can communicate to vlan 10 outside vlan 20 can communicate to vlan 20 outside right but inter vlan routing is not configured in this virtual switch which is part of this and there is a reason i will let you know but for that i need to uh, dig little more concepts right we can discuss it at the end yeah, of so the class mm -hmm. So it means that uh, for inter VLAN, they have to go to the uh, real switch and then have to come back, right? Indeed. They have to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm not saying that they cannot implement the virtual router because if you see the AWS GCP, they have virtual routers. They can put virtual routers there. Those are not physical devices and those are doing their routing too, right? And that is where we are more yeah. we are more moving toward the virtualization concept. And that is what I have written. Little bit of virtualization. Because definitely I will be creating a course for the virtualization piece too. But now let me finish one of the most interesting concepts. And we can discuss it, Rahulji. Anywhere else. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mr. Naveen, you can ask your question. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Vishnu. So I think see, in VMware, we call this virtual switch and similarly on top of virtual switch, we have something called virtual distributed switch yes, also. Yes, yes, yes. Where uh, exactly that uh, interval and routing happens, I believe. Uh, I would say the the use of distributed switches, uh, switch. Actually, we are going slightly away from the concept. So what we can do, Mr. Uh, Naveen, we can take it at the yeah. end. Okay, because class is going okay, to be okay. one and a half hour long. Whatever time we will be having, we are going to discussing this question, believe me. But sure, 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 yeah. thank you. distribution yeah. switch has some important use cases. I will let you know, okay? Sure, okay. So on the right-hand side, if I show you what we have, right? Because left-hand side, you can see that there is definitely a link redundancy. If this link goes down, of course, we can send traffic here. There is no doubt about it right but there is no switch redundancy if this goes down everything goes down and that is why everybody is talking about this why can't we create this lacp ether channel 
which is coming out from this switch like this, right? And one interface of this ether channel is going to one switch, switch number one, right? Or maybe switch number two, this one. And the other interface is going to switch number three. Very, very interesting. If that is the case, it is going to be awesome, right? You can you can think a lot of problems in this topology. Believe me, we will be discussing the problem. We will be solving them. But I am saying that it is going to be great. If this link goes down, I still have another interfaces. I can go out from the other link, a different switch. There is no doubt about it, right? But to build this, what things we need to consider? But definitely my single point of failure my single point of failure which was the switch on the left hand side it is gone now i need something like this right and now suppose it doesn't matter because the switch one understand only lscp it is doing only lscp the magic is happening on these two switches right now if i connect a server also suppose and the server understand only LACP, it doesn't understand anything else, it can also connect like this. If that is the case, then I have solved the server problem too. If this link goes down, then basically my traffic can go out from here like this. If this link goes down from the switch, the traffic can go like this, right? I need something like this. I understand that if you, if you try to design this in your mind, it is going to be problem, right? There are going to be so many problems.